Many years ago, a species called Yeti used to live in the ice-covered area of Mount Everest, but now they are almost extinct. However, a group of people on Earth somehow find a Yeti. Being greedy, they captured the Yeti and held him captive, thinking that they can make a lot of money by showing it to the people, the same as a zoo. But one day the Yeti escaped from the cage and took refuge on the roof of a house in the city, where a little girl lived. At first, the girl is a little scared to see the Yeti, but gradually a good friendship develops between them. The girl wants Yeti to take him home to Everest, while greedy people are scattered all over the city to capture the Yeti. If you want to know if the girl will be able to take the Yeti to his home or if they will lose to those people, then you must watch our video till the end. And yes, if you are an animation movie lover you will obviously like the video very much. So, let's start with the explanation of this amazing movie called Abominable released in 2019. One more request, hit the subscribe button to make me feel motivated as it takes lots of effort to produce videos like this. The movie starts with a girl. This girl's name is Ming. I have picked up a metaphoric name for her. Ming wakes up in the morning proceeds to go out without eating. So, her mother asks her where are you going? Ming says I'm going out a little. I have some work to do. Her grandmother then says, What is the matter with you that you are going out so early in the morning on holidays? Ming then says, You will never understand what I do. Her grandmother then says whatever you do outside but don't mix with the boys at all. Her mother asks her, Do you need some money? Ming says, No, I don't need any money, and tells her grandmother, Don't worry, I won't mix with any boys from outside. By the way, outside, she earns money by doing various jobs such as delivering dogs to its owner's house, delivering a product, even the work of cleaning dirt. However, while she was returning home after work, with some money, she gets noticed by some boys and girls. Suddenly a girl speaks up. Yak. What a stench. It looks like she came up from a sewer. Ming hears these but goes straight home without saying a word. She sees her younger brother in front of the door. Her younger brother says you don't give me any time. Don't even play with me. Ming then says, look, I have no time at all. With saying this she starts climbing the stairs. Just then a boy comes out. This boy's name is Jin. His job is to seduce a new girl every now and then. In fact, Jin also lives in this house. And he is Ming's cousin. Ming's brother then asks Jin to play with him. Jin says, You can see how well dressed I am. How could I play basketball after these? Ming's brother then says, Damn it. You always tell me the same thing. I know you're going to seduce a girl now. However, Ming quietly enters the room. Her mother tells her, Let's have dinner together tonight. Later, you have to play violin for us. Ming then says I have no appetite. You eat, and I forgot to tell you that I had sold my violin. Then she enters her room. At night, her mother caresses her and puts her to sleep. Just as his mother leaves the room, she gets out of bed, climbs out the window and climbs the ladder to the roof where she built a small room of her own. There is a map of China all over the walls of that room. In fact, she saves money to go to these places in China. She then goes to a corner of the roof, pulls out the violin, and plays it. Just then a helicopter flies over her head and she falls down due to the heavy air blow of the helicopter. The violin slips out of her hand. He sees a huge animal's hand when she goes to fetch the violin. She is scared at first, but whenever she secretly grabs the violin, a huge creature comes out. In fact, it is a Yeti. When Yeti tries to attack him, the helicopter is still hovering in the sky, so he hides in fear again. Seeing this, Ming hides the Yeti with a metal fence and sleeps all night on the roof. In the morning Ming sees that the Yeti is injured. So she rushes to fetch medicine from the pharmacy. As she was leaving, she sees the footprints of a huge animal on a car. Seeing this, she realizes that the Yeti might be escaped from somewhere. Then she comes home and started stuffing a lot of cakes in her bag. Seeing this, her grandmother says in wonder you might be so hungry that you are taking all these. Ming then says yes I haven't eaten for a long time. I am very hungry. I can eat all these. She then feeds the cakes to Yeti, who is scared at first but is no longer afraid of her. Ming then puts a bandage on Yeti's injured hand. Later she makes a nice house for Yeti so that he can stay all day. She plays the violin at night while Yeti listens to it peacefully. A picture of Everest was hung on a billboard next to the roof. At this point Yeti starts pointing at the picture. Ming then asks is this your house? Yeti nods his head in response. Later. Ming googles to know more about Yeti. She is amazed to know that the creature which was extinct thousands of years ago is now on the roof of her house. But on the other hand, one greedy businessman named Burnish who collects extinct animals to show them to the world keeps telling his companions, if you can't find the animal, then I will make you all the doormen. However, Yeti wakes up and starts playing alone. Ming goes upstairs and sees Yeti. She tells him, 
You have to hide now or people will see you. Shortly after, Ming's younger brother and Jin see them. Ming's brother shouts out loud seeing this huge monster-like animal. Jin, on the other hand, calls the police. Seeing it, Ming says what did you do that? This creature is my friend, and he will not harm any of us. Meanwhile, tracking Jin's call, the greedy businessman Burnish and his companions arrive there. Seeing no way out, Yeti takes Ming on his shoulders and runs away from that building. Meanwhile, Ming's younger brother and Jin run after them thinking that Ming might be kidnapped by that animal. On the road, Jin seduces two girls takes the bike from them and follows the Yeti to save Ming. At one point, on top of a tower on the bank of the river, the gang members nearly caught Yeti while on the helicopter. Just then, different types of lights started flashing on the tower enabling them to get on a cargo ship escaping their gate. Ming then tells Yeti to get on this ship and leave. Yeti gets on the ship and stares at Ming with pitiful eyes. Jin, meanwhile, comes from behind and tells Ming not to worry about that monster and let him go like him. However, Ming then jumps into the ship without thinking twice. Soon after, Jin and his younger brother jump on board to save Ming. While on the other hand, Burnish after losing the Yeti begins to swell with anger and grief. He then goes on to say how could we prove now that Yeti is still alive? I have invited many journalists and scientists. All my hopes are gone. Shortly afterward, one of his men comes and says that they got informed that a huge animal along with a girl had been seen on a ship yesterday. Mr. Burnish says I want that animal in any way. Moreover where is the ship going? The man says that the ship is headed for Beijing, China. Meanwhile, they eat a variety of food from the boxes on the ship. At one point they hide in one of the boxes. Later, each of the boxes is lifted into each truck. The boxes were loaded with cold drinks. From the box they are in, everyone begins eating cold drinks. At one point, when the cold inks of a kin runs out, Yeti shakes it off to have the last drop, causing them to fall down the street with the box. They then take refuge in a garden on the side of the road. Suddenly the Yeti begins to roar. In fact, Yeti has a special kind of superpower because of which small fruits grow bigger and ripen in an instant. They then begin eating them. But the funny thing is that the fruits grow so big that at one point they had to run away from there in fear. However, they get hit by several colored fruits. With great difficulty, they reach a safe place and spend the night there. Jin tells Ming that I will go home in the morning I don't want to waste my time after this creature. Ming then says, do you understand how important family is? I wish I could deliver this creature to his parents in any way. Jin then wanders around to get mobile networks, but Ming's younger brother continues to play with Yeti. Then they all fall asleep together. When they wake up in the morning, they see Ming playing the violin in front of Yeti and he listens to it peacefully. Jin then tells Ming that he has discovered that ships leave for the city from a port nearby. Then Ming says you two better return home on that ship. I will return home only after taking this animal to Everest to his parents. Meanwhile, Mr. Burnish arrives at the wharf with his gang. They realize that the animal has escaped from here. They then begin following the cold drinks throughout the road by a car. After a while, they arrive in a huge garden following the cans. Mr. Burnish then divides his men into groups and sends them to different places. The four of them, on the other hand, reach a hill. They are all very fascinated by such a beautiful view. But after a while, they see a few drones. Ming asks Jin what they should do now. If they failed to escape they would surely get caught. However, Yeti then starts making a kind of sound, causing the flower in Ming's brother's hand to begin to inflate like a balloon. Soon after, Yeti, Ming, and his brother grab that flower and fly away like a parachute. But poor Jin can't go with them. The three fly away holding that flower. A few drones follow them but fail to reach them. Jin begins to shout. I will meet you at the port. A little later Mr. Burnish's men capture Jin. They ask him where the rest of them are going. But Jin says you don't seem a good man. I won't tell you anything. Just then, Mr. Burnish's assistant comes and says you can believe me I am a scientist. We mainly research different types of animals. That creature kidnapped your friends. We can bring them back if you want. Jin, however, gets tempted by her sweet words. Jin then says I would help you and take you to the place they are going to. Meanwhile, the three of them have reached a desert-like place. Then they starts walking. When it was night, they come to a river and take shelter. Ming sits down and says with disappointment, if Jin had stayed with us we could have easily reached Everest by looking at Google Maps. While on the other hand, Jin is with the gang of Mr. Burnish. They have lured him with their sweet words. When he wakes up at night, he goes out quietly and hears that Mr. Burnish's assistant is telling one of them that somehow within tomorrow we must have to find the Yeti. Showing it to people all over the country we will earn some money, and then we will take it to the lab and tear it to pieces. Then the man says what are we going to do with those children? She then says that we will kill them too. Upon hearing this, Jin realizes that the woman is not really a good person, so he tries to escape from there. 
He starts the bike with a great attitude but unfortunately, the bike gets ahead as soon as he loosens the clutch, although he stands still. However, after that, he starts looking for Ming by looking at the Google map on his mobile. Meanwhile, on the other hand, the three of them see a train while walking. They get on the train and reach that port. Arriving at the port Ming thinks that Jin might have told them that he would wait for them in this port. Now they have to find him in any way. But if they get out with the Yeti, everyone will recognize him. So they cleverly disguised Yeti like some of the wild animals around. Then they start looking for Jin in that port, but they can't find Jin anywhere. After much searching, Ming finds Jin on a boat. Jin then says Mr. Burnish's people are looking for us. They can catch us anytime. However, by then, Mr. Burnish along with his gang have nearly reached them. With great difficulty, they get on the boat escaping everyone's gaze. Whenever begins to flee with the boat, Mr. Burnish's men see and chase them. They get very scared because they are on a boat that has very poor speed. But the most surprising thing is that at this point Yeti again uses his superpower to keep the boat running very fast. With so much speed, they can no longer keep their boats in order. As a result, their boat rushes into a huge mustard field. Mr. Burnish's advanced car with which they were chasing them also rushes and turns over into that mustard field. Yeti continues to sail the boat through the mustard fields. Their boat gets out of control and crashes near a forest. Ming's younger brother gets unconscious after a long journey. After a while, he regains consciousness. The funny thing is when he coughs some mustard flowers come out of his mouth. Soon after, Yeti also begins to take out thousands of mustard flowers from his mouth and Jin gets flooded into mustard flowers. However, next to them they see that Ming's violin is broken. Seeing this, Ming is upset and sits in the forest alone. Jin then goes and comforts her. Ming says it was my father's violin and my father used to play it for me every day while sleeping. Jin then says what else to do. The violin is broken. Now do not be upset. However, we have to get the Yeti to Everest very quickly. Just then Ming's younger brother calls them saying that he has something to show them. As they approach they see that Yeti had fixed the violin as before. Seeing this, Ming happily embraces Yeti. They realize that Yeti has huge superpowers. On the other hand, Mr. Burnish's assistant tells him, Sir, we must catch the Yeti as soon as we can, because the closer the Yeti gets to the mountain, the more his strength will increase. And once he somehow goes up the hill, then there is no way we can catch them. Mr. Burnish says we need more people. Bring more people here. Meanwhile, Ming's brother gives her some pictures that she was collecting for so long. But when she checks it she sees that a picture is missing but Yeti finds out that picture for her. Ming then says that my father really wanted to visit me here and today my dream is going to be fulfilled. After a while she goes in front of the huge sculpture shown in the picture. Then she starts playing the violin and then tears start rolling down his eyes when he thinks of his father. From each drop of tears, a flower starts to bloom. But at the sound of his violin, Numerous flowers begin to bloom all around. Jin hands a flower to Ming and says we are going to Everest. Then they start the journey again. At night they take refuge in a place. In the morning they again walk to Everest. Just then, at a distance, they see a little swinging bridge. Ming's younger brother shouts, Once we cross the bridge, we'll reach your house. Then they start crossing the bridge running. Whenever they reach the middle of the bridge, Mr. Burnish arrives with his gang. When Burnish's men surround the bridge, Yeti climbs up the bridge's pillars and reaches to the top, and begins to make a kind of sound. Hearing this, Mr. Burnish remembers the past, the time when he actually stole the Yeti from his family. Just then he realizes his fault. He says, I've been wrong for so long. We should never hold Yeti captive. We should release him. You let him go. But no one listens to him. That's when his assistant betrays him. She winks at one of the gang members to shoot him to make him unconscious. Later, she orders everyone else to capture Yeti as soon as they can. They then capture Yeti shooting him with poisonous tranquilizer needles. When Ming tries to stop her, she throws Ming off the bridge. They capture everyone else and leave by the car. Only the violin can be seen left behind. After a while, a flower flies from there and it is seen that Ming did not actually fall down from the bridge but was hanging by a rope. Then she somehow climbs over the bridge. She then starts playing the violin. After a while, violin's melody supernaturally reaches Yeti's ears. Hearing this, Yeti gets out of the car with his superpower. Mr. Burnish also wakes up by then. This time when the assistant comes to kill Yeti, he throws her down a hill. Mr. Burnish then tells Ming that you have done a very good job. The people of the world should not be told that Yeti is still alive. Jin then says we will get him to his home. Mr. Burnish says it's impossible to go there. Jin then says everything is possible for Ming. Once she decides to do something, she does it. After a while, 
They fly through the clouds and start their journey on the way to Everest. In fact, Yeti blows them away with his power. But when they get there, they don't see anyone. Yeti then makes a kind of sound. Soon after, it is seen that many Yetis have appeared there. Basically, they have come here after hearing the sound. They are all very happy to see it. Ming then holds Yeti's hand to indicate that she finally has managed to get him to his family. Upon realizing this, Yeti hands Ming a picture of her family. She is very happy to see it. They then come back home. Ming hugs her mother and says I won't go anywhere leaving you. She now really understands the importance of family. Shortly after, Ming's younger brother brings a box. When they open it, they see that Mr. Burnish has sent a lot of adventure items for their upcoming journey. Maybe in the future they will start a new adventure somewhere else. And this is where this beautiful movie ends.